The clock is ticking. Taxes are due. Most Americans now pay someone else to do them because the rules are so complex. I have an accountant. It's something you never want to do yourself. I have absolutely no idea what's in them, and I'm signing my, you know, promising that this is all true. This is Bob. He does my taxes. I don't want to pay Bob, but I have to because I don't understand the rules. I bet you don't know the rules either. Tonight, our game, Real or Fake, will test you. One state offers a $50 tax credit for losing both arms. Is that real or fake? That we're not sure shows how crazy it is that the IRS spends your money to make this film that says without the IRS, Earth would be in chaos. There's money laundering, bribery, cash pay, haircuts, and manicures. And some people want higher taxes. But we're already taxed to death. That's our show tonight. John Stossel. Oliver Wendell Holmes, the former Supreme Court Justice, once said, taxes are what we pay for a civilized society. Liberals like citing that, but Holmes said that in 1927, when taxes were just 10% of GDP. That's enough to pay for a civilized society. But America's government's grown so far, so fast, that it's now spending 40% of GDP. I think it's now much too big, but I do want to pay my fair share. So what's that? What is fair? I now give most of my income to the government. Poor people pay a smaller percentage. And lots of people say, that's fair. I see their point. But Texas Congressman Louie Gohmert says it's not fair and America needs a flat tax, meaning, Congressman, what? Well, it means that uh, when people hear the word fair share or the, the fair, it ought to be flat tax. The only way to truly make things fair so that if you're making more, you pay more, you make less, you pay less, make it a flat tax. The word fair ought to bring to mind a flat tax. Uh, and the president has talked repeatedly about Warren Buffett's unfairness in not paying as high a rate as his secretary. Well, fix it. Make the capital gains 15. Make the, uh, the income tax 15. We can work out a number, but make it flat to make it fair. You hear people say, well, I want it fair, and they really do, but they cannot tell you what a fair share is. You give them the numbers about the top 1% making 13% of the money and paying 39% of the taxes, their eyes gloss over. But if you say, well, it would, would it be fair if everybody paid the same rate across the board? They go, yeah, that sounds fair. I think Americans are ready for it. I am skeptical. I think most Americans would say Warren Buffett has billions of dollars. He should pay more than I do. That's absolutely right. They, he should pay more than But he than should be a higher should. percentage, I mean. Oh, oh. Well, that, that would be a progressive, and that, that begins to play into people's jealousy. And I don't want to go after millionaires more than anyone else. Make them pay their fair share. That's a flat tax. And uh, I don't think people would mind if you saw that they would not have all the deductions, all the wiggle room. They would be in the same exact position as everyone else. And so when you talk about having this flat tax, you also talk about getting rid of deductions. You would just keep charity and mortgage interest deduction. Everything else just gone. Uh, everything else gone, everything gone. And you know, if you were going to design a system that would really allow maximum corruption, maximum lobbying efforts, maximum fundraising in Washington, you'd create a system just like we have, where it's so complex. We've gotten to this point now, we've got to fix it. It can't keep going like this. But the complication comes in all the stupid deductions and exceptions. The complication, a graduated progressive tax rate is not that complicated. Well, but the, the way that the wealthy have not been fighting so hard against the progressive rate is they've got all the loopholes. I think the, uh, the wealthiest would quit fighting so hard if they were on the same level playing field with everyone else, and I think people would accept that. But our leadership so far has not been willing to push it, and I think it's, it's a no-brainer. We ought to be pushing it. Thank you, Congressman Gohmert.
You well, know, thanks Steve Forbes and Art Laffer and all those who've been pushing before me. We'll hear from Art Laffer shortly on the show. Good. Now, what I hate even more than just the high taxes is the complication. I resent that I have to pay Bob, pay him for the hours he spends doing my tax forms, just mine. But I have to pay him because there's no way I can do mine on my own. The federal tax code is now 70,000 pages long. 70,000 pages in this is just what the feds do. State and local adds more. All these rules have some purpose to penalize some behavior and encourage another, but the result is insanity. Insanity that helps the politically connected, people in the know, people like me. Dumb tax rules once gave me a free golf cart. I got it thanks to Congressman Charlie Rangel's conceit that a tax credit for electric cars was a good thing. Encouraging energy efficient products such as plug-in hydrate cars. His tax credit led dealers like this one to advertise free carts. Buy one for 6,000 bucks, get a $6,000 tax credit. So I got this one, totally free. Free for me anyway, you taxpayers paid for it. Yes, you did, and I gave it away. And that credit, thankfully, no longer exists. But it's things like that that keep the tax code complicated. And this is just the income tax. There are all sorts of sneaky taxes that most of you may not even know about. You and I pay them all day long, from the moment I wake up and turn on a light. I pay more when I brush my teeth and license my dog. My building pays property and fuel taxes and adds it to my monthly bill. And when I leave home to take the subway to work, I pay the Metropolitan Commuter Transportation Mobility Tax. At work, I make some phone calls. Yes, absolutely. Or get a bite to eat or a soda to drink. Uh, I'd like a smoked turkey in this. When I gas up my car, as much as a quarter of the price of gas is federal, state, and city excise taxes. Heck, people pay sales taxes all day long. So many taxes. I need a drink. I'm lucky I don't smoke. This is one reason why American economic growth has stalled, says Scott Hodge. He's president of the Tax Foundation. Now, when I think of these rules strangling growth, I think of the safety regulations and the constant environmental reg of the spider web, not the tax code. We've done okay with our tax code. The tax code is a mess, and it's because of these 70,000 pages that dictate virtually every aspect of our lives and cost Americans about six billion hours worth of our time just to comply with. And that's the reason about six out of ten of us pay someone else to do our taxes because it's not only so complicated, we're afraid of making a mistake and getting audited. So it's, it's created fear in Americans as well as complexity. And you're saying that those six out of ten of us could have used that money and time more creatively might have boosted the economy doing something useful. Oh, it's what we call deadweight loss. It costs the economy about $200 billion a year just to comply with the 70,000 pages of tax regulations. That's part of the reason why the economy is growing so slowly. So, pop, these are all popular. These are steering people to good things. Solar panels on the roof of your house. You get a credit if you adopt a child. The Congress passes these things because people say, that's fair. Oh, they all sound great by themselves, but when you put them all together, it's what creates, the, creates this complicated mess and dictates every aspect of our lives. It's made the IRS a super agency involved in everything from where we put our kids in daycare to whether we buy a hybrid vehicle. That's nuts. And it, well, it's, but why is it nuts? If you want people to put their kids in daycare to help those people who need that help uh, or to buy hybrid vehicles, how else are you going to steer them there? Well, uh, it steers the economy in the wrong direction in many cases, and that's one of the reasons why the economy is growing so slowly, because we're dictating our lives to the tax system, not to what's economically efficient or profitable. That's what drives the economy, and that's what other countries have done by streamlining their, their tax system. Countries like? Like Hong Kong would be a good example. Uh, there are about 15 countries across the globe that have moved toward a flat tax. Hong Kong has a low rate, broad base, no capital gains, no death tax, uh, no no uh, uh, other sorts of taxes that uh, create all of this economic inefficiencies. 
And uh, to be clear, Hong Kong doesn't have a flat tax, but it has a simple tax. A simple tax. Russia, Estonia, a bunch of countries have 15 or 20 percent mm -hmm. flat taxes. Exactly. And Hong Kong went from poor to rich in just a few years. They grew out of poverty because of simple rules. Simple rules, which has made this, that country really the, one of the most uh, business-friendly, economically efficient countries in the globe. And the Tax Foundation says we should have no deductions? Well, we should have few deductions. Uh, there, are, there are things that make sense, like having a deduction for savings. We shouldn't be taxing savings, capital gains, things like that. But let's get rid of most of the other politically directed... Charity? Uh, listen, the Tax Foundation is a charity under the tax code. <laughs> I'd be willing to give that up for a flatter tax. Okay, a man willing to give up money for a flatter tax. Thank you, Scott Hodge. Coming up, did you know that the IRS used your tax dollars to produce a Star Trek parody? The no taxions, lack of skilled tax leaders, has resulted in a widespread case of confusion. Your money at work. But next, the secret taxes in Obamacare. And also, people who profit from our complex tax code. The Affordable Care Act means big changes this year when you file your taxes. I read the whole 900 pages. I understand that I have to pay taxes, but I resent the sneaky taxes, the hidden fees on my phone bill and electric bill. And now we're about to be hit by new sneaky taxes as part of Obamacare. Maybe you thought Obamacare is funded by shifting money from rich drug companies and insurers. Dream on. You will pay more, though there hasn't been much publicity about that since John Merlon. He writes about taxes for Investors Business Daily. So what's hidden in Obamacare? Well, there are 21 at least tax hikes in Obamacare, separate tax hikes. Most of them you won't see. They're hidden in various ways. Let's say, for example, that you have a flexible spending account, which millions of Americans do. Tax-free money that you can spend on, on health care. Also we, called a health savings account health, or medical savings exactly. account. Obamacare limits it to $2,500. So what that means is anybody who had been putting, say, $5,000 into a flexible spending account is going to pay more taxes next year. They won't know why. They'll just suddenly realize they have a smaller deduction. Their, their tax bill goes up. What so, else? Well, the, the, you also uh, have limits on what you can use your flexible spending account on. Obamacare says that you can't spend it on over-the-counter drugs, which you used to be able to. Now, the, the limit on how much you can put into a flexible spending account raises $24 billion over 10 years. The limit on what you can use it for raises another $4 billion. So it's not peanuts here. You're talking about real money. The biggest money, $317 billion, payroll and investment tax? That's supposedly the tax hike on the wealthy that you mentioned. Uh, what it says is that if you make over $250,000, your Medicare tax, you pay a premium on that of 0.9%. So it goes up by almost 1%. Uh, and then there's a tax on investment income of 3.8%. Obamacare includes something called a high medical bill tax? Right now you can deduct medical expenses if they're over 7.5% of your income. What Obamacare does is raise that threshold to 10%. So if you're sick and you have high medical bills, next year you won't be able to deduct nearly as much money as you did. And Plus $160 billion, the mandate penalties. The, that's the company that says, I'm not going to insure my right. people, I'm gonna have, I'll just pay the penalty. There are individuals... It's a penalty, it's not a tax. I no, guess it's the it's same a, thing. Supreme Court says it's a tax. Uh, the, uh, the, the penalty tax on individuals, they figure, will raise about $50 billion over 10 years. And then you have penalties paid by businesses who, who don't buy insurance. Remember, you have to buy insurance or you pay the penalty. Now, we've just covered four or five of the 20-some taxes. It's so complex. H&R Block recently made a commercial just to capitalize on the complications of Obamacare. The Affordable Care Act means big changes this year when you file your taxes. I read the whole 900 pages. I will give you a tax and health care review. I know the law, I have the solution, and I can help you figure it out. We're going to see this through. She's smiling about this big grin. 
we invited H.R. Block on the show to talk about the, the gloating in this ad, but they, they didn't respond. I, I guess they're happy because complexity oh means my gosh. We, more of us have to go pay them. This, is, this turbocharges tax complexity. That's why she's smiling. Uh, you have to figure out how much subsidy you're, you're due. You have to figure out if you don't buy insurance, how much of a penalty you pay. That's really complicated. If you have an insurance gap of three months or less, you don't pay the penalty. But if it's three months or more, you pay the penalty. If you're in one of these exempt categories, you don't have to buy insurance or pay a penalty. Uh, it's, it's inordinately complicated. It's so complicated, in fact, that the application form is 21 pages long because they need to know how much income you're making and so forth. I hate it! I hate all these complications. Already, most Americans now have to go to someone. They can't do their tax. They don't do their taxes on their own. They go get help now with Obamacare. More will have to. Exactly right. Thank you, John Merline from Investors Business Daily, a great newspaper. Coming up, a new version of Star Trek paid for by the IRS, in other words, by you. And you won't believe what they do with your money. We received a distress call from the planet Notax in the ATAT system. According to their leaders, the planet civilization has degraded to anarchy. Chaos rules over order. As I pay my taxes this week, it would be comforting to know that the people at the IRS collecting them understand the burden taxes impose and they approach their work with humility. But then I saw this training video that they paid for to take off on Star Trek. Captain's Log, Stardate 8.23.2110. We received a distress call from the planet Notax in the ATAT system. According to their leaders, the planet civilization has degraded to anarchy. Chaos rules over order. We've seen a landing party. That's right. In their training video, they say, without the IRS, civilization ends and chaos begins. It's worse than we thought. There's money laundering, bribery, cash paid haircuts and manicures running rampant in the street. Cash paid haircuts and manicures running rampant. What's wrong with paying cash? Apparently to the IRS, that's destructive chaos. And the IRS is upset that on that planet, amateurs help people with their taxes. They're all calling in now, Captain. Interplanetary tax practitioners practicing without a license. We asked one guy for his credentials, and he showed us his movie ticket stuff. Which movie was it? Avatar 17 in 4D. Back in Russia, I dreamed someday I'd be rich and famous. Me too. That's why I became a public servant. That video cost you taxpayers $60,000. Why would the IRS do this? This show's special correspondent Kennedy and Reason Magazine editor Matt Welch have some ideas. So why? What's going on here? This was a conference. This is a video in front of a conference of uh, IRS investigators. And so it's a sort of way to build morale and make them feel good about themselves so they can feel good that they're going throughout the galaxy and making sure that there's no chaos because there are IRS tax collectors uh, scrounging through each and every seat cushion in the universe. It's inherently distrustful of human nature, and for that I find it patently offensive. And it's illogical. And the acting is horrible. <laughs> the acting is horrible. <laughs> but there is logic that we need some taxes to pay for the government that we do need. There's no logic that somehow if you take the IRS out of the American picture that it will devolve into anarchy. That doesn't make sense. We didn't have federal income taxes in this country 100 years ago. Uh, it's a century old this notion and the United States back then in 1900 was the biggest economy in the world. It wasn't chaos, it wasn't anarchy, it was the world's most successful economy before the federal income tax. And the government got money from tariffs? User fees? Exactly. And the last clip confused me because they say, oh, on this horrible planet, amateurs were helping people with their taxes. The IRS, the government tried to get a law passed saying you had to have a license to give tax help. 
Yes. They lost on that one. With our uh, help of our good friends at H and R Block, for which I'm a customer, spent four and a half hours last Saturday trying to get my tax thing done. Uh, yeah, the complexity is everybody's friend except for the actual consumer here, uh, and so that's why you know it's great for H and R Block, it's great for uh, certified tax repairs, but it's bad for individuals. And they make a joke about it. They they make a joke. They joke within the video about how complex the tax code is and how many forms you need and. The joke is on us. It's at our expense, the fact that it has become such a complicated system. Why not pare it down to one form so people can file their taxes themselves so they don't have to have professional help? I mean, you talked about hurting because more people Because we want the all show. these deductions, and if you're going to give all these breaks, you need forms for them. But it hurts poor people. But that's Congress's fault, not the IRS's. Let's play one more clip from the IRS film that confused me. Sir, they're even exchanging their lowest coin currency for paper bills. You don't mean... That's right, sir. Pennies on a dollar. <laughs> and this is somehow funny to the IRS. What, what are they talking about? I think there? it's an in-joke talking about pennies on the dollar, which is what you get in uh, lawsuits against people who own back taxes. Ultimately, uh, those taxes are collected on p at pennies on the dollar instead of the full back tax bill, which they find uniquely horrifying because they're not getting each and every last penny out of it. Yeah, the IRS comes after you, you owe $100, you end up settling for some pennies, or because if you fight them, it costs you $500. Okay, ask, ask Wesley Snipes. He's paid with his reputation and his freedom. He, he's rotting in a Spanish prison right now. It might not be a Spanish prison, but Wesley Snipes was sentenced to three years in prison for federal tax evasion, and he's not the only person who's suffered because of his celebrity. And let's also remember that the IRS is the only tax collecting agency in the entire world that says it can go around and force foreign banks to collect taxes for American citizens who live abroad, right? So what this has caused is actually the chaos they collect claim to want to prevent. It means that Americans who live anywhere else outside of America can't get a bank account because the IRS is forcing those banks to snoop on Americans and collect their money. So in no the, other country tries to do that in America. No, no one, no one does it anywhere. The only other country that even wants you to file a tax return when you live abroad is Eritrea. So, you know, high five for us. We're aping Eritrea, except we have even more enforcement. And we don't know that Wesley Snipes got a longer sentence because he's celebrity. Maybe he did some terrible things. I don't know. Uh, I hope that's he my that's my personal opinion, but okay. I, I feel his pain. That's all I'm saying because paying taxes, it's forced labor, and it, it not paying your taxes and dissolving the IRS does not lead to anarchy. I think it's an experiment we should try. I look forward to that. Thank you, Kennedy, Matt Welch. Coming up next, tax competition. Some celebrities say taxes should be higher, but I don't see most of them volunteering to pay more. There are some really rich people in America, and America's deep in debt, so why not just raise taxes on those rich people? Some famous rich people say they sure don't need a tax cut. Eva Longoria, who works on movie sets, does not. I don't spend so much that I can't afford to pay a little bit more in taxes, and I really don't mind paying more taxes. So they say. So what's the harm in taxing, taxing them and other rich people more? Well, let's ask a tax dodger, Art Laffer. Oh. You moved to Tennessee <laughs> just to avoid paying California's income taxes? That's correct. I mean, it, you know, it's really phenomenal. There's no state income tax. There's no ca state capital gains tax. There's no state estate tax. It's really phenomenal in Tennessee, and it's a great state. You're an affluent guy. It's just the state taxes. How much difference That's right. can it make? How much money do you rich people need? Oh, I need a lot. It's there. I mean, I don't mind paying more in taxes, John. I don't mind it at all, to be honest with you. I just mind it paying more as a percentage of my income and affecting my decisions. I would like to make a lot more and be willing to pay a lot more in taxes with a low rate, broad base, flat tax. But that's not what these guys do. These guys go right at a small base with a very high rate that does the most damage and doesn't get the money. They just don't get the money. Look at California. They have the highest tax rates in the world. They're one of the, the states slowing in growth dramatically. The revenues aren't coming in. And the provision of public services is one of the worst in the country. And you can save them. Your, your new book title, Eureka, sure. How to Fix California. Yes, I can. But the way to fix it is, is, to, is to leave it. 
well, if they won't fix it, I've got to leave it. I worked, I was on Governor Schwarzenegger's Council of Economic mm -hmm. Advisors, and when he turned to the dark side, we tried four propositions that were really pretty good. And we lost. The California Teachers Association beat us. I mean, beat us to a pulp. But then he switched and he became part of the problem. And I just said, I'm out of here. And in, in 2006, I moved to Tennessee uh, purely and simply because of taxes and state economic policies. It's just, and look what's happened since then. I mean, if you don't believe that it was a good forecast, not that I make many good ones, John, but that one was good. And states like Tennessee that don't have a uh, state income tax grow more than other states. Oh, yeah, we have more revenues, too. I mean, we have much less unemployment. And all these states that have no state income tax, I'll run through the list, Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Texas, Washington, Wyoming, Tennessee, New Hampshire, they're yes. all prospering, growing better than the, t the tax state? Well, not all of them are growing better. I mean, there are other policies that also matter. I mean, for example, two of those states that you mentioned do have an unearned income tax rate. Uh, three of those states, I believe, are, right, are not right-to-work states. So there are other factors that make a difference. But yes, they're doing very well. And the high-tax states, California, New York, Illinois, on the road to Greece. <laughs> yes, they really are. I, I think that would be insulting to Greece. All right, let's, let's talk tax rates. Golfer sure. Phil Mickelson, who made 60 mil last year, uh, took a lot of grief when he said, my tax rate's 62, 63%. Yeah. I got to make some decisions about what I'm going to do. I don't know why he took grief for that. I mean, it's a very true statement. Because people say, sure, you'll save eight million, but you got millions. You're so, greedy, how much you want? Well, you can give it to people you choose to give it to, but to give it to these people in Sacramento is a travesty. That's like feeding rats in your basement. <laughs> you just shouldn't be doing that, John. You don't want these creatures to breed and multiply. They are the problem. It's like giving money to tobacco companies to sell more cigarettes. It's just terrible. Some other celebrities were more open about maybe moving to another state because of taxes. Tiger Woods moved from yeah. California to Florida. I moved out of here um, you know, back in, what, 96, um, you know, for, for that reason. Here in California, I just want to say, liberals, you could actually lose me. <laughs> it's outrageous what we're paying. That's Bill Maher, who yes. generally loves big government. So you'd think it would start to sink in when even those people say that. Yeah, I know Bill Maher fairly. I've been on his show a number of times, and I sent him a copy of my book as well and said, join me, Bill. We'd love to have you in Tennessee. <laughs> Will Smith says he supports higher taxes, but when he was being interviewed in France and learned about their proposed 75% tax rate, his reaction was telling. Il y a payé d'impôts, vous, au-delà de 1 million d'euros? Pas 30%. 75 we can laugh about the hypocrisy of celebrities, but l let's just go back to the basic question of fairness. Yes. Shared sacrifices, they say. Warren Buffett Great. and Obama this week on his budget, he's, he's saying if you're making more than a million bucks, you got to pay at least 30 percent in taxes, the Buffett yeah. rule. It seems reasonable that those of us with more should pay more. Well, we should pay more. I mean, if you make 10 times as much as I do, John, I think it's per perfectly right that you would pay 10 times as much in taxes as I do. I mean, that to me seems perfectly obviously fair. But when you look at Warren Buffett, what really is unfair is he paid about six one hundredths of one percent of his income in taxes. That's not fair. And that and that doesn't even include his not paying capital gains because he owns Berkshire Hathaway and his company buys and sells the stocks. He doesn't do it personally. And he's also got an insurance company, who, as we all know, has huge tax advantages. I mean, Warren Buffett is the master. He's the king of tax circumvention. And to have him tell other people to pay more in taxes is truly obnoxious and hypocritical. But because he pays so little, it seems reasonable that he should say, change these rules, make me yes, pay Yes, he does, should. That, but he didn't. Uh, I watched every time he talked about it, and he never once suggested taxing unrealized capital gains. He never once suggested limiting the amount of deductions on gifts to your family's uh, uh, 501c3s. He never once mentioned any of that stuff. I mean, for obvious reasons, that's what would have gotten him. 
It, it is hypocrite. And, you know, it's like Howard Metzenbaum of Ohio, who was the, who was the father of the estate tax, the death tax. Six months before he died, he moved to Florida so he wouldn't have to pay the Ohio estate tax. John Kerry uh, in Massachusetts buying his yacht and harboring it in Rhode Island. I mean, on and on it goes. Their behavior is not bad, John. It's their words. It's their policies. It's their, it's their rec recommendations and influence on others that's so hypocritical and disgusting. Who would have thought that actors and politicians would be hip hypocr hypocritical? Yeah, that's right. Thank, Thank you, you, Art Laffer. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. Coming up, what would be a good tax system? And also, a quiz on tax breaks. Can you tell what's real and what's fake? Have you filed your taxes? You get all your deductions? You probably missed a few. The tax code's complicated. Those best able to avoid death and taxes are those who death by taxes are those who employ lobbyists and tax specialists. I don't have a lobbyist, but I do have Bob to prepare my taxes. Thank you, Bob. I'm glad you're there. Actually, I'd like to fire you. I don't want to pay you, but I assume if I didn't pay him, I'd miss all kinds of tax breaks. To me, the rules are just incomprehensible, and I bet to you, too. So let's test that by playing a game we call Real or Fake. Which tax break is real, which is not? I'll compete against two Fox and Friends hosts, Gretchen Carlson and Steve Ducey. Kennedy's back here to test us, so take it away. All right, thank you very much, and thank you all for playing Real or Fake. All right, is there a $10,000 tax deduction for whaling captains? Is that real or fake? That is, in fact, real. You all got oh, it correct. What gosh. a way to start the show. I gotta be a sea captain. <laughs> all right, question number two. Tussle. Is there a $500 tax credit for painting your roof white? Is that real or fake? Where? Anywhere. Top of your house. Steve Ducey has just taken the lead. Congratulations. Uh, that is real. Tussle. It is run by the Energy Star Sorry. program that cools the inside of your house because white reflects light. Thank you. All right, what question if you number live three. At a cold place? That's what I thought. So I asked which state. Question number three. Can you deduct up to $500 to make your jet ski more energy efficient? Is that real or fake? Congratulations. You all got that one right. All right, question number four. In one state, you can get a $3,000 tax deduction for an exceptional tree. Is that real or fake? An exceptional tree. An exceptional tree. One that eats in your up, yard, eats in your up yard. green gases. No, actually, nobody could make this up. Yeah, exactly. The gentlemen have it. Come ah. on, Gretchen. Come on, sister. Timber. Question number five: Is there a five hundred dollar tax credit for putting a permanent bird sanctuary on your property? Oh, please, of course. And I'm sorry, you all got that wrong. You cannot put a bird bath in your front yard and well, get a $500 tax. There ought to be a tax credit yeah. for that. There really, there really should. Yeah. All right. Question number six. <laughs> One state offers a $50 tax credit for losing both arms. Is that real or fake? What? $50 only? Tax credit. You know what? It's so outrageous. Finally, Gretchen. Yes, sister. Woo! That is real. Right. Girl power. Woo! In Oregon, you must have suffered a permanent and complete loss of function of two limbs. Oh. But you can only collect the $50 the year you lose the limb. Oh I'd have God. to pay Bob $50 just to fill out the forms for that. But. <laughs> that's horrible. That actually is a, that's a horrible law. That well, is, at least they're giving something. Yeah. Well, come on. That is a slap in the face. Do you want to disarm that law? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, come on. She'll now. be here all week. Thank you. Try the veal. <laughs> There's a tax credit for that, too. I heard Question number seven. In Montana. Question number seven. One state gives you a $50 tax credit for putting up a flagpole in front of your house. Is that real or fake? The gentlemen have it. No. That is, in fact, fake. <laughs> made sounds, that up. In it the, sounds real because it's patriotic. It, so, it, does, it does sound good. But it does. It's better than that other one. Question number eight. Mm -hmm. Is there a tax credit to hire kids that aren't readily employable because they lack basic skills? Oh, probably. Is that real probably. or fake? <laughs> that is absolutely real. It's called the Work Opportunity Tax Credit. Mm -hmm. Disconnected youth must be between 16 and 25, unemployed, with no college, and they have to lack basic skills. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've had a couple of those at my house. <laughs>
All right, question number nine. One state lets you deduct up to $200 to foster the classic American sport of foot bag, also known as hacky sack. Is that real or fake? This can't be real. No. This can't be real. You're absolutely right. That is oh. fake. That is phony baloney. Yes. The last question. Mm -hmm. This is question number 10. In one state, if you live to be 100 years old, you don't have to pay state income taxes. Is that real or fake? Is that the state of Willard Scott? Oh, very good. I think it's going to be fake. 100. I'm, I'm Brought to you by Smucker Steve Ducey for the win. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Kennedy, and thank you, Steve and Gretchen. Wouldn't it be nice if taxes were simpler so you could do them yourself and pay less? I could fire Bob. When we return, a better way to tax. Have you read that wonderful book yet? Just came out in paperback. No, they can't responds to the conceit that government can fix everything. Well, it can't and it shouldn't try. Government fails, but individuals succeed. But individuals can't succeed when government's constantly in your face, taking your stuff, telling you what you may not do. And government does more of that as it grows. In recent years, it's grown bigger under every president, both parties. Makes me wonder, was there ever a president who didn't grow government? Well, there were a couple, actually, including this guy, Calvin Coolidge. He's never on those best presidents lists that I see, but he should be, says the woman who wrote that book, Amity Schles. Coolidge actually stopped growth, cut spending. Yes, he did. When Coolidge left office, John, in 1929, the federal government was smaller than when he came in, in 1923. And yet, the chattering classes, the smug know-it-alls of the political class, he, he's never on, he's never, he's not liked, he's not... Well, well, politicians of either party like to grow government, and he, he shrank it. And what I found in writing this book was, it was fascinating how he said no, no they can't. He said that all the time, John. Um, whether it was with his 50 vetoes or... With 50 times he vetoed Congress. He's, he said it's much more important to kill bad bills than pass good ones. That's right. He wrote that to his father, who was also a lawmaker. Uh, he said, give administration a chance to catch up with legislation. Don't write too many laws. Um, all these interesting phrases that sound so foreign to us now. That's what I like about him. He's a bit different, right? He, he, he believed in austerity. He thought if the government was austere, the economy would grow, and the evidence of his period suggests he was correct. Yet he's blamed for the Depression. Well, it's kind of a weird history thing. If you don't want to hurt Roosevelt, you have to hurt the people who came before him, don't you? But that, Hoover came in between, and Hoover increased spending. That's right. So I, I personally blame Hoover more, uh, but... Coolidge was the antithesis of Roosevelt, Theodore and Franklin especially. So if you like big spending, big government, you're going to want to undermine Coolidge. He took naps every day. Like Reagan. That was Reagan-esque, yeah. Or, yeah. And, you know, people want activist politicians. Well, Coolidge, we should say, at the time, he was popular. Well, that's right. And they said that, uh, you know, now we say uh, governments create crisis and like to. Coolidge tried to make it uh, uncrisis, decrisis. That was part of his method. Um, and some people noticed that. They said he had he developed the art of boring the country into <laughs> believing that it didn't need government, which is the best. Mencken made fun of his naps, but also said the itch to run things did not afflict him. How refreshing. It's interesting, isn't it? And uh, even the White House under Coolidge was pretty modest. Uh, he tried not to spend there because he wanted to set a good model so he could get his tax cuts. He did not squander political capital, as some presidents have said. So he would save everywhere to prove uh, that he could cut taxes. He cut tax rates, eventually down at about 25 percent, and more money came in. That's right. He cut taxes lower than Reagan to 25 percent. Remember, Reagan is 28 percent. So you want while he had a balanced budget. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, and on top of that, he got more revenue. This was a supply side experiment that worked. They didn't use the phrase supply side. They said 
scientific taxation. That's what they called it, but it was because as Mel and his treasury secretary said, um, if you charge less, maybe more trains will come. Principle from business, make it up on the volume charge what the traffic will bear, the traffic of commerce, and the government did get extra money. And in addition, the rich paid more taxes with lower rates. When, when there was a disaster, when the Mississippi River flooded, he didn't rush there to say, oh, we're going to help you and government solves this. That's right. And that was difficult. I mean, it's difficult for a president to say no because the president wants to be loved, right? That, that's why they're politicians and they want to be reelected. But he thought uh, right at that moment, people wanted a lot of disaster spending and infrastructure spending. It's, history uh, repeats itself all the time, right? And he knew that he wouldn't be able to veto that spending if he went down to the disaster. It would just overwhelm him politically. So he didn't go. And um, history played a rude trick on him, a tragic trick. His own state was then flooded very soon after. And of course he wanted to go, but he couldn't go to be fair. And he didn't. He didn't go home to Vermont. He, he said he did not intend to surrender to every emotional moment. Oh. That's all politicians do today. Well, that's interesting. And yet he was extremely popular. That, that's what I like about him. Voters liked cool Coolidge a lot. If only we could have more of that. Thank you, Amity Schley. Silent Cal was a president who acted the way I wish our political class would act. He was humble, promoted small government. That allowed prosperity to happen. We could do it again. If government spent less, and taxes were simpler and lower, America would boom. That's our show. See you next week.